I remember fondly, in the first year of my mandatory enlistment, feeling the warmth of a nearby star strike my face through the glass windows. It reminded me of home, of air that didn't taste of overworked filters, of beaches with sand on the methane lakes, of cities bustling with races who've benefited from our rule. The race of bipeds, humans they sometimes call themselves, were said to be the same. Our ships pierced the cloud of rocks surrounding their system, which to our knowledge were uninhabited roughly three days ago. We timed our invasion right to avoid gravitational interference with the gas giants. 1.5 days ago we began our retrograde burn to enter a solar orbit. A day later, our ships transferred to orbit around their home planet. They knew we were coming, as was to be expected. We thought that technology rudimentary, but we understood it was proficient. From our observations, they still used projectile weaponry against one another, something that our ships and soldiers became resistant to long ago. We had always wondered why they never took the next step. Why they didn't move on to lasers and quantum rays. Some believed it was their constant bickering. Never left room for technology to improve. Others thought there existed a global religion in which the projectile weapons were worshipped. A small minority thought they were stupid. No, they are not stupid. They harbour no reverence. They chose to stab each other with sticks and stones. They chose to make newer weapons because they cowered to their greatest creation. I have felt its warmth on my face. I watched it dissolve our strongest alloys, incinerate our armoured soldiers. I felt my clothes catch fire. I felt skin peel off my shoulders. I saw jolts of bright light flash in my closed eyes. It killed the electricity on our ships. It killed men who dared to stand with honour. It shredded the cruiser. It warped space-time itself. The backup generators failed. The oxygen turned to poison. The light turned to cancer. And then the second one came. I had to crumble the blackened skeleton of the pilot in his seat before that second metal hull detonated. The metal control stick burned my hand as I wrestled the ship into a different orbit. I could feel the warmth of that second fake sun strike the ship as I opened the wormhole for the home. My face feels cold now. If this universe had a god, the humans made him into a gun. They scared themselves more than they scared us. This invasion was a grave mistake. The Emperor set the sand brown paper down in his lap, stroking his chin with a free fingered hand. A bit flowery for a military report? He quit with a grin. Those were his last words, his advisor grumbled, with his back to the Emperor, leaning against the balcony that oversaw the rolling hills of red fauna and grey rocks lit by the blood-red sun. He penned that before bleeding out from his ass. The Emperor's grin faded, as did his good mood. His eyes shot back down to the paper in his lap. How many did we lose? The advisor sighed before turning. This was no longer a problem he could turn his back to. This wasn't a problem that could be brushed under another Imperial rug. All of them, your majesty. All? All 1.63 billion soldiers. Gone. And if that account in your lap is to be believed, little remains of their bodies. The Emperor's face twisted into a grimace, and his eyes darted to the left and the right. This is unacceptable. It's absurd. How do we not know of this? How have the humans not conquered themselves yet? How have they not committed a holocaust against themselves? The Emperor rose to his feet with fury in his eyes, directed at his advisor. The advisor took a deep breath. In moments like these, when the Emperor's temper flared, someone had to remind him to be rational. 
I warned you that we had little information about the humans prior your order to attack. I asked that we spend time researching them prior your order to attack. I asked that we learn what there was to gain prior your order to attack. The advisor sighed. I have called the human ambassador here to discuss what has happened, to see if we can settle on peace terms without our enemies discovering anything. We should send them flying into the sun, if anything. That would be brash, but not uncalled for. A servant appeared around the corner. The human ambassador is here, her angelic voice proclaimed. Send them in, the advisor replied. From behind that same corner, a woman with streaking black hair, wearing a white sweater and a pomegranate suit, strode in, followed by a translator. She paused ten feet from the emperor and bowed. Your majesty, she addressed him. The emperor disregarded the formality with a wave of his hand. May I ask why you summon me? Don't play stupid, the advisor growled. You know why. If it's to discuss peace, I am afraid there isn't much I can do for you. It's to discuss what happened in orbit above your home planet. How 1.63 billion of our best were incinerated before even touching your atmosphere, the Emperor spat. How have you not killed all the mere billions of humans that exist in your puny solar system? The Ambassador took a deep breath. That is unimportant as of now. What is important is discussing what is likely to happen going forward. The Advisor laughed. You think we will discuss what is going to happen next with you? You think it unimportant, you unused weapons of genocide? The Ambassador crossed her hands in front of her. We've rules on Earth. Rules about how to fight. In spite of our differences, we're fighting over a part of the Earth. And if there's no Earth left, or no people left to inhabit it, then there was no point to fighting. You have rules on warfare, the Empress scoffed. Rules that don't apply to non-humans like us? Precisely. The advisor began pacing with his eyes fixed to the floor. You said peace isn't an option. Explain. The ambassador looked off into the valleys of red trees. How do you explain the attitudes of an entire race? How do you generalize all the leading cultures? Humans are silly creatures. We always need something to fight. If there isn't anything, we make up something. Our greatest inventions created greater casualties. Our greatest leaders built cities with blood. And our greatest motivators are things we can attack head on. You gave Earth something they haven't tasted in a very long time. The blood of an empire. She let a smug grin show. It's coordinated the whole Earth. All the interhuman fighting has stopped. All nine billion people at once looked up into the stars and found hope in those nuclear flashes and burning carriers. You humans are disgusting, not silly, the advisor tried to say in a collected tone. We know, the ambassador said, and we hate to admit that we love it. <laughs>